more to come here in 2022. Manib, welcome back to the stage. Hey everyone, I feel like after a uh, bow tied Munib, I'll have to like up my dressing game. All right, uh, first of all, thanks, thanks everyone. I think it's always exciting to be uh, at, a, at a Stacks event and to see the community grow. I, I feel like one thing I keep pointing out is like, uh, it's amazing to see how decentralized this ecosystem is and it really takes that ethos from, from Bitcoin itself. Like if you go to a lot of other crypto projects, it's really like one big company that is running the show and they're calling themselves a, a, a crypto protocol. Whereas I think over here, there are probably like something like 50 different companies that are coming together and actually building something that is truly decentralized uh, and, and works, works with Bitcoin. So thank you, thank you so much. I know that people have kind of like started their lunch back there as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll try to make the most of this talk. I don't want to make it too long and stand between you and, and lunch. All right, so let's, let's dive right in. Uh, I want to do like a quick overview of uh, the opportunity in front of us, where we stand, and what I see some of the core challenges that uh, this year, you know, I would love to see more, more work on. Let's just start from the beginning. I think uh, Bitcoin can be the best settlement layer for Web3. And that is something that remains like a somewhat underexplored area in crypto right now. I think what's happening is that Bitcoin has established itself as the sound money layer. Why? Because it's the most decentralized, it's the most durable, it is simple. And I think people can easily rely on it. And at the same time, we're seeing smart contracts and applications being developed on new types of networks. And the key idea here is, can it all just happen on Bitcoin? Can we bring all those applications and smart contracts to benefit from the durability of Bitcoin, from the decentralization of Bitcoin? And that's, 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 that's kind of like what this community is about. If you look at Ethereum, I think it's an it's a amazing case study. So Ethereum is something like $500 billion of network value and then $500 billion of applications built on top. And they have a very interesting flywheel going on, right? If you look at, at the typical flywheel in Ethereum, you'll notice that people can actually deploy their capital, right? So Ethereum uh, capital can be deployed into smart contracts, which attracts more developers and investments into the Ethereum, right? And it's, it's a little bit like this interesting flywheel could be brought to Bitcoin. If you look at what's happening with Bitcoin, Bitcoin is roughly like a trillion dollars of capital with very little applications built on top. This is kind of like the state of Bitcoin right now. This is the stuff that we want to change, right? It's great as a store of value. It's great as sound money. But there's almost like a trillion dollars of capital sitting there passively and currently, there aren't a lot of applications being built around it. And this is what our community is about. We want to make Bitcoin programmable. We actually want to increase the demand for BDC in smart contracts. And that, I think, in my view, would happen in two steps. The first one would be when simply Bitcoin becomes more programmable and more widespread usage with, uh, from developers. Right, so this is effectively, if you could swap your BDC into some sort of a smart contract very easily, deploy that capital and start earning, earning yields there. But the next step is going to be using Bitcoin infrastructure as a settlement layer for applications. So Bitcoin is by far the most secure settlement layer, but right now the use of Bitcoin as a settlement layer is very, very small. And I think that's where we see Bitcoin as a Web3 platform, as something where developers are building all sorts of stuff on top of Bitcoin, and that, that, that is where I think true value can be unlocked. And I think by making Bitcoin programmable, you actually make it easier to interface with other ecosystems as well. We know Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, these other interesting networks that exist out there, but to better bridge them to Bitcoin, to better kind of like connect Bitcoin to the rest, rest of the crypto ecosystem is something that can be done through, through, through Stacks as well. So in short, I think right now, 
you can make Bitcoin pro programmable and you can increase the demand for BDC into these smart contracts. And that is what we are noticing this year. Last year was all about building the foundations, taking the core functionality and the programming language or primitives like stacking live. And this year, I think is going to be about actually deploying that capital into smart contracts, into applications, and, and take it from there. And one of the things, the questions that I get a lot is, uh, how is Stacks different from other technologies that we have seen before? And I think it's a great question. You basically need to have two core functionalities. One is that Bitcoin needs to stay on the Bitcoin chain. Like if you have to take BTC and issue it on a different network, like wrap Bitcoin or Ethereum, you're kind of like losing out on the decentralization and security properties of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has to stay on the main chain as much as possible. And secondly, you need to have fully expressive smart contracts. You can't have limited contracts. You need to give developers fully expressive smart contracts so they can build whatever that they want to build. So that's, that's I think, how you can compare stacks to some of the other approaches out there. Lightning, for example, is great for payments, but it does not have smart contracts. And there are networks like RSK or Liquid that work more as like independent networks instead of having a cross-chain consensus with Bitcoin and being able to do interesting things just with simple uh, Bitcoin transactions the way, the way Stacks can. And right now, the first version of the technology that's live, uh, it kind of like is decentralized like Bitcoin, but it's also slow like Bitcoin. So I think one, one of the interesting things that uh, we will see more work on this year is getting a really fast transactions layer for Bitcoin. And I think that's the work uh, called hyperchains. Some of you might be familiar with, but the way to think about hyperchains is that Bitcoin remains the settlement layer and it scales out in different, different layers around it. Uh, Stacks brings a programming layer and hyperchains can bring a fast transactions layer. What, if you look at the, the crypto industry right now, what's happening is that most people, they experience smart contracts through some of the newer generation L1s like Solana or Avalanche, and they see really, really fast speeds, right? And they, they start to expect like that type of performance from more decentralized ecosystems like Bitcoin as well. If you go and experience the contracts on Stacks today, you'll notice that Stacks kind of like works with Bitcoin blocks. And it's, it's kind of like, uh, Bitcoin blocks happen every 10 minutes. So there's a trade-off between decentralization and speed. And the works like hyperchains are giving you the best of both worlds, that you can have extremely fast speeds. You can get the speed of like a, like a Solana, but you are in the Bitcoin ecosystem and you're benefiting from, from settlement on Bitcoin. So I think that, that's going to, going to be a major unlock that I'm really excited about because we, our community is already uh, hyped up about what's possible today. But imagine once really fast speeds are there and really high network capacity is there as well. I think that would, that would, that would be, a, be a big game changer. The second thing that I'm uh, really excited about in terms of like what's possible is that a, a tighter connection to Bitcoin. Right now, uh, you have XBDC, which is a wrapped asset that's, that's on, 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 on the Stacks layer, but it's just really a first step. What we would love to see is more tighter integrations with native Bitcoin swaps, right? So uh, I just met the, uh, the developer behind LN Swaps, uh, where you can actually just do a Lightning transaction and purchase a Bitcoin NFT, or you could do a Lightning transaction and purchase a stablecoin. We want better, tighter integration with Bitcoin liquidity, right? So you could just do a simple Bitcoin transaction and you can actually uh, swap into an asset that you're looking for, or you could actually, uh, let's say, participate in a reserve for a Bitcoin-backed stablecoin. I think that's the second area that how can we make it as simple and painless as possible for developers and users to basically pour Bitcoin liquidity into the applications built through Stacks. And the third thing is I, I love the Clarity programming language. I think it's very safe. And the main Stacks chain and the first hyper, uh, like hyper chain will obviously be using Clarity. But there is a world out there of EVM compatible software and developers who understand Solidity. And I think we need to, to figure out on ramps from that world where people that, who have developed something in Solidity uh, to Bitcoin. And how can they easily uh, port their contracts over or maybe even run something in an EVM compatible hyperchain 
and then transition those, those uh, assets over in a more seamless manner to the main clarity contracts and the main, main stack chain. So I think that would be uh, equivalent to plugging into liquidity and developer resources that, that uh, are currently available on the Ethereum side or on EVM compatible ecosystems. So uh, to summarize, I think like one of the three big unlocks that might happen for our ecosystems this year, first would be extremely fast transactions through hyperchains. Second would be Bitcoin liquidity. So you know we truly unlock the trillion dollars of capital that is sitting as Bitcoin in a native way. And third would be some sort of bridges or uh, compatibility with EVM systems so we can bring more, more liquidity and uh, smart contracts from that world into the Bitcoin world. With that, thank you, thank you so much, and I'm so excited to be here.